Everyone knows your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man has no shortage of awesome superpowers, but he does get some help out from his amazing super suits from time to time. Hey, the spider couldn't give him all the powers in the world. Today we're going to be talking about some of the most exciting features and facts about Spider-Man's super wardrobe. We'll also explain a major change in his suit went through from Captain America Civil War to Spider-Man Homecoming. Back before Captain America Civil War hit theaters, we were super excited about the movie for many reasons, not the least of which was the fact that we were finally going to get to see Spider-Man in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We knew it was a copyright issue and all that, but we prefer to leave reason out of our comic book movie experiences. When the trailer dropped and many fans noticed his super suit looked a little off. It looked much smoother and less textured than those worn by actors Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield in their respective Spider-Man franchises. So what was up with Tom Holland's suit? It turns out the Spider-Man suit for that movie was 100% CGI. It took quite some time to design the suit, so they didn't have a physical suit when filming started. However, when it was time to work on Spider-Man Homecoming, they had a physical suit to use in conjunction with CGI elements. Now, CGI is used to do things like blur the zipper, smooth things out, and of course, animate the eyes. Regardless of how you think this Spider-Man suit stacks up to others, you have to admit the movable eyes are a pretty awesome addition. Everyone knows that Spider-Man is one of the most popular superheroes around. Everyone just loves the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, and it's not hard to see why. Yeah, Spider-Man! Covering your face with a mask is a great way to protect your identity, but it can make it difficult to express your emotions. When you watch the Spider-Man movies created by Sony, you can see how much expression is lost when the mask is worn, but the MCU managed to give us a Spider-Man with movable eyes for the first time on the big screen. Even when Peter Parker makes his own homemade costume, this feature is an important component. Of course, we know turning on instant kill mode creates scary, red, beady eyes, but Peter's peepers can convey other things as well. Of course, there are some potential features hidden in the eyeballs too. Guess you could say this suit makes sure Peter is up to his eyeballs in special features. The design of the mask gives Peter the ability to see an increased depth of field, and they help filter out external stimuli. Tony Stark's design features a built-in augmented reality display, which allows Peter to analyze his surroundings. Peter can also have Karen alter the visual spectrum and see through objects. During his time in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, we know Peter at least made one of his own suits. Although this hasn't been explored too extensively in the movies, the comic book version of Peter Parker is an absolute genius. But don't underestimate how brilliant he is in the MCU just because he didn't quite make it to his academic decathlon in Homecoming. After all, he did manage to make that crazy strong and versatile web fluid he uses in conjunction with his web shooters. But in the MCU, it's established that Peter's a bit behind Tony in the brilliance department, and in his defense, he's still a high schooler. He also doesn't have access to the near-limitless resources of Tony, so it makes sense that his more high-tech and less sweat y gear came from Tony. But in the comics, Peter makes most of his own super suits and he creates plenty of them. The homemade suit Peter does create in the MCU was inspired by one worn by the comic book Peter Parker clone Ben Riley. It's pretty similar to the one he wears when he's the Scarlet Spider. The tech suit made by Tony Stark has a lot of similarities to the superior Spider-Man suit worn by Dr. Octopus during his time as Spider-Man. It's a long story, just Google it. At the end of Spider-Man Homecoming, Tony presents Peter with a shiny new suit of iron spider armor and an invitation to join the Avengers. But although Peter had previously complained about Tony taking away his old suit and refusing to make him an official Avenger, Peter declined. Thank you, Mr. Stark. But I'm, I'm good. Still, he got to wear the suit anyway in Avengers Infinity War, and we saw it again in Endgame. We mentioned that in the comic books, there's a spider clone named Ben Riley who goes by the moniker the Scarlet Spider. But he also calls himself Spider-Man, and his Spidey suit looks an awful lot like the Iron Spider armor we see Peter wear in the MCU. The comic book version of the Iron Spider armor was red and gold, which is really more in keeping with Tony's preferred color palette. While Peter had to wait for some time to obtain this suit in the movies, in the comic books it's created for Peter during the Spider-Man The Other storyline, and he heavily utilizes it in Civil War. Just because Tony has to always be over the top, he also made a second suit of the Iron Spider armor, just in case. Everyone knows that getting bit by a radioactive spider left Peter Parker with some pretty awesome superpowers. Of course, things like his super strength, enhanced endurance, and sticking to walls are kind of obvious, but his more subtle spider sense is one of the more impressive powers, even if it's the hardest to articulate. Basically, he has the precognitive ability to sense danger, which manifests itself as a tingling sensation to warn him. Because of his superhuman reflexes, Peter is able to avoid most injuries without being actively aware of them. 
However, there's a downside to this incredible power, and it's one his suit is designed to deal with. If you've ever experienced sensory overload, then you know the problem with Peter's spider sense. Triggering this sense causes his body to produce additional adrenaline, and sometimes he needs to override this for his own sanity or for specific situations. The eyes of his super suit helps to filter out some of it. And there may be some other fail-safes at work as well. Let's not overlook how incredible it is that the iron spider armor allowed him to travel to outer space in Avengers Infinity War. Sure, it lets him breathe, but the lack of oxygen is only one issue with space travel. There's also the massive amount of radiation and hazardous environments to contend with, but apparently, this suit is powerful enough to withstand just about any environment Peter finds himself in. There's no question that Tony Stark is capable of creating some truly mind-blowing technology. That's nothing to scoff at, but let's consider how crazy it is that he also makes it so people can actually use these devices he comes up with. It's no surprise Peter was overwhelmed at first when Ned removed the training wheels protocol from his tech suit. We're all disabled by the training wheels protocol. This thing has 566 different web shooter options alone. Forget about all the other features. Even dealing with tons of variables in rather minor situations is daunting, let alone the heat of battle when your life's on the line. So let's not overlook the amazing neutral reactive interface Tony was kind enough to include in his tech. The Iron Spider armor can respond to Spider-Man's sensory input without him consciously making a call. During Infinity War, the suit was able to deploy the spider legs when it came time to save Doctor Strange, despite Peter not even being aware of their existence. It's like the self-driving car version of a super suit. So we know the Iron Spider armor of the MCU is absolutely amazing, but the comic book version of Spider-Man is known for both the quality and quantity of his creations. We all know Tony Stark loved to create tons of different sets of Iron Man armor, even though he was known to destroy them from time to time. But Peter Parker's no slouch in that department either, and in the comics, he created one of the most powerful suits of armor around, the MK4. This is definitely something we'd love to see in the MCU someday because it's the most technologically advanced suit Peter ever managed to create. It's made up of lightweight liquid nanotech that provides an extreme amount of protection without slowing Spider-Man down. After all, a heavy suit like the Hulkbuster armor wouldn't really take advantage of all of Peter's superpowers, now would it? Of course, this suit had tons of web shooting options, including corrosive acid webbing. It also comes equipped with sonic disruptors, which unleash sonic attacks, and if anyone is unwise to touch the armor, it can unleash a devastating blast of electricity. In addition to its offensive capabilities, it's also extremely durable, having withstood the heat from the Human Torch, the Iceman's ice, and weapons made of Dark Force energy. There's no denying that Spider-Man has an astonishing array of incredible super suits we'd love to see incorporated into the MCU someday. This guy is a suit for every occasion. But nobody's perfect 100% of the time, not even Spider-Man. He's had a few fails when it comes to putting together the perfect outfit, to say the least. No, we're not talking about his first handmade wrestling outfit. Sure, it's not the best. But it was his first try and it wasn't made for saving the day, but rather for fighting people for some extra cash. Let's just say that desperate times have called for desperate measures. Peter Parker once ran into some trouble with a certain alien symbiote most of us have heard something about. Reed Richards was only too happy to examine it for him. But this left Peter without a crime-fighting costume, so he used an ill-fitting Fantastic Four costume with a bag over his head. No, really. Poor guy didn't even have any shoes to go with the outfit. He called himself the Bombastic Bagman and went around with a Kick Me sign on his back. Yeah, definitely not Peter's proudest moment. Then there's the universe where Peter tried to create a substance to take away his superpowers. Not only did it fail, but it left him with six arms, which means he had to make himself a whole new suit to accommodate them. We all know Disney acquired Marvel Studios some time ago, and there was a mixed reaction from fans when it went down, but it's hard not to get excited about the idea of Spider-Man making an appearance at Disney parks. In fact, he has a brand new super suit for his latest park appearance. Disney's California Adventure in Anaheim and Disneyland Paris are going to be getting new interactive Marvel experiences. Of course, they're going to feature many beloved Marvel characters, but they'll also give fans a chance to enter the Marvel Universe. It features a story about Tony Stark's worldwide engineering brigade known as Web. <laughs> See what they did there? For this attraction, Spider-Man needed some new duds. So Disney turned to Ryan Minderding, the head visual department at Marvel Studios. He has experience putting together Spidey suits for the big screen and has got to work with Walt Disney's Imagineers to bring Spider-Man to life. Spider-Man is joining heroes such as Ant-Man, the Wasp, and the Guardians of the Galaxy as attractions in our beloved Disney parks. So far in the MCU, subtlety hasn't exactly been one of Peter's strengths. While some heroes specialize in stealth, Peter is more likely to swing on the scene with a barrage of one-liners and pop culture references. Sure, that's something we love about him, but sometimes you have to switch things up a little bit. This is why we were so excited to see him in a stealth suit during the trailer for Spider-Man Far From Home. 
Wearing a bright red suit is gonna get you noticed, so it makes sense that Spider-Man would use a subdued suit if he wants to partake in any sort of stealth activities. His suit was inspired by a couple that Peter Parker wears in the comic books. One of them is Spider-Man Noir, which features a Peter Parker who lives during the Great Depression. He's a darker, edgier Spider-Man who doesn't have the same hang-ups about destroying bad guys as most other versions. Movie fans probably recognize him from the Sony movie Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Then there's the stealth costume. Also known as the Big Time costume from Spider-Man Big Time, this suit has tons of features which allow Spider-Man to work while incognito. It can camouflage him, muffle the sounds he makes, and just to make it extra useful, it's even fireproof. You might have noticed that a number of Peter Parker's super suits make him immune to fire. In the realm of superheroes, fire might seem like a pretty mundane threat, but it's a serious one. After all, Peter Parker himself isn't fireproof, and he maintains many of his same weaknesses the rest of us humans have. One of Peter's weaknesses is that he needs to breathe sweet, sweet oxygen just like the rest of us. It's something most of us take for granted considering the abundance of it on Earth, but as Nick Fury so delicately pointed out in Spider-Man Far From Home, Peter has been to outer space. Clearly, the Iron Spider armor allows Peter to breathe in outer space or he wouldn't have made it until the very end of Avengers Infinity War. But in the comic books, this set of armor has some specific breathing-related capabilities and we wouldn't be surprised to see them revealed in the MCU sometime in the future. The Iron Spider armor contains 8 minutes of compressed air, just in case Spider-Man finds himself underwater or in another situation where he can't breathe. It also helps to filter out any kind of nuclear, biological, or chemical weapons, which could be breathed in without proper filtration. Tony Stark has definitely proved himself capable of creating some extraordinary suits packed full of useful features. But let's not forget that Tony also likes to be in control and has some trouble trusting others to act in accordance with his wishes. When Peter and his friend Ned took a closer look at the tech suit, they uncovered something called the Training Wheels Protocol, which limited the features Peter was able to access. Tony also installed something called a Baby Monitor, which recorded everything Peter saw while wearing the suit. Tony could have at least come up with some slightly less condescending names for these programs. No wonder Peter wasn't too happy about them. But the comic book version of Tony Stark also left some nasty surprises in the Iron Spider suit. He was worried about the possibility of Peter turning against him someday, so, in a fit of paranoia, installed some features which would allow him to incapacitate Spider-Man if necessary. Needless to say, Peter wasn't too thrilled with this and decided he didn't need to use this particular suit after all, but Tony had also made a few duplicates of it just in case. There was a time when Aaron Davis was confined to the pages of the comic books, but he recently enjoyed some time on the big screen. In Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, he was revealed to be the uncle of Miles Morales. When he wasn't hanging out with his web-slinging nephew, he was working as a villain known as the Prowler. We also saw Aaron Davis in the MCU during Spider-Man Homecoming, played by Donald Glover. He talked about having a nephew who lived in the neighborhood and, in a deleted scene, referred to him as Miles. In the comic books, the Ultimate Universe crossed over with Marvel Prime, and Miles Morales found himself face to face with a variety of enemies, including the Iron Spider. Eventually, it was revealed that the man behind the Iron Spider mask was none other than Miles' own uncle, Aaron. Now that the MCU is a multiverse, maybe there's a chance this could happen on the big screen at some point. One of the many things Marvel Studios does really well is knowing exactly when to release information in order to build up a maximum amount of hype. Just think about how long we had to wait before we knew the fourth Avengers movie was going to be called Endgame. And let's not forget about how quiet they're keeping information about Phase 4 of Marvel movies and beyond. There were already many things we knew going into Avengers Infinity War, but Spider-Man's costume was something Marvel Studios tried to keep quiet about. We had seen it at the end of Spider-Man Homecoming, but Peter hadn't actually worn it and we didn't know what it was capable of quite yet. Apparently, Marvel Studios really wanted the extra legs to be a big reveal, so they waited until the last moment to let us know. Some shots in the trailers were strategically edited in order to keep the additional appendages a secret, and toys which incorporated them into their designs were held back and not released until just before the movie hit theaters. Spider-Man has gone through tons of costume designs over the years, and Marvel Studios is fond of paying tribute to comic book designs. In early issues of Spider-Man, his iconic costume featured heavy dark blue or black shading due to printing limitations at the time. There was also a time when Spider-Man utilized some underarm webbing as part of his crime-fighting aesthetic. This unique feature was part of a costume design created by legendary Marvel Comics artist Steve Ditko. Let's not forget that the first time Peter Parker came up with a costume himself, he wasn't thinking about how he was going to fight crime. He was just focused on winning fights in order to make some extra cash, and being Spider-Man was just part of his shtick. The underarm webbing was basically just a decoration to keep the theme, and it's been brought back by different artists from time to time. But in the MCU, Peter does have some practical fabric under the arms of his costume. 
His tech suit comes with a pair of web wings, which can also be extended or retracted, and allows Peter to glide through the air. What do you think about the awesome array of super suits Peter Parker has at his disposal? Do you think they're over the top? Share your ideal super suit build with us in the comments section and then click subscribe for more great videos from us here at CBR. Bye for now!